and welcome to another Cheeky Girl Creations DIY video. So today this I'll be making a video for the Sean Petit Creative Team. So those are some of our stencils and I'll be working on a pre-primed 8x8 canvas. So I've just teared out two sheets of book paper from that, that book I got from a charity shop many years ago. And I'm just cutting off the white borders because I didn't want to use those on this piece. And I'll be sticking the, those down with PVA glue. So you probably saw my announcement on Instagram and Facebook that I'm part of the team and it's for 2018 to 2019 so I'm very excited about that. This is my first one and there will be future ones as well and I will have links to Sean's blog post that will kind of like explain the creative team as well as her YouTube channel um, so that you can watch the video on there as well. And as well hi to Sean's subscribers who's watching it on her channel. So I'm tearing strips now and again sticking those down with PVA glue and I'm just trying to break up the white space a little bit and just create a bit of texture. I didn't want it to be too much texture, just a subtle texture. So now I'm using some washi tape which is really nice for a subtle texture and I'm just using like this random one. I don't use this one a lot um, so I didn't mind using this for texture because I will be covering that up. And then I'm going to use another one because I thought that maybe I would have drawn from some of the colours. I didn't really. Um, most of it did get covered up um, by chalk primer later on. And again, I'm sealing those with PVA glue just to make sure they don't lift up. And now I'm taking some chalk primer. I made that myself. Um, and I'm just covering that over a rough layer really with the palette knife again. And that will create some texture and chalk primer is like gesso, but it's got a chalky texture. So that creates a really nice um, texture. And off camera, I did put some book paper and washi tape on the edges of the canvas so that the design would go all around it. So now I'm taking some of the stencils and I will have um, all of the supplies I use on a blog post and I'll link that as well in the description. And I'm using a few of these backgrounds, um, masks really, um, to create some texture with these homemade ink sprays. Um, these sprays that I made myself are either made from um, calligraphy or drawing ink or um, food colouring. So like the black is from calligraphy ink, so that'll dry permanent, but the orange and the blue is food colouring, so it won't really dry permanent. Um, so some of it will move once I add paint. And I did um, do some ghost prints as well on the edges. So again, that design carries on over to the edge. So now I'm going in again with the same colors I used with the sprays, but with um, acrylic paint. Again, what I use will be on that blog post, which I'll link below. So I'm going to use this cadmium orange, I believe it's called. And I'm just applying that with my fingers very roughly, just in a few different areas. And again, putting those on the edge, I do like to um, have the design carry on to the edge as well. And I'm now using this light blue paint and that's blue mist. And I'm also adding that in a few areas as well. And that's a really nice contrast. And I am making this for a friend and her favorite color is orange and her other favorite color is blue. So I'm incorporating that into the canvas. And again, you can see very rough. I will be going over the orange a little bit just to like blend everything together. But I do want to be careful because since orange and blue do contrast, it will create mud if I like mix it too much. And now I'm going to mix white and Mars black together. A very small amount of black though, just to create like a light gray. Just as a neutral to go on with the canvas. So like everything just kind of blends together. And again, I'll go over the orange a little bit and then I'll also come back with the orange and add some over the blue and the grey just to bring everything together so it's a nice um, background that works together. So you can see I'm going to bring in the orange now. Just very lightly in a few areas. Again, I'm using my fingers and if you don't want to get your fingers too messy, you can always put on gloves. I just really enjoy using my fingers. And I thought there just wasn't enough orange, so I'm adding some more on, especially around the edges where I thought it just looked a bit light. Okay, so that's kind of dry. So I'm just spraying again that black spray through one of the, um, the masks. And I'm just kind of rubbing the mask off. I'm not really cleaning it properly. 
just rubbing it off on my table there and now I'm just adding some splashes again with that ink and I did dab back some of that um spray because I thought it just looked a bit too dark and I'm taking that silver paint and just adding a few dabs there not enough to see it but like kind of if the light hits it you might see little hints of um silver and shininess on there but I am being careful not to smudge too much because the paint isn't perfectly dry and again I'm adding some more splashes there Okay, so I'll be using this Dreamcatcher um, stencil now, and I'll be using the Mars Black Paint again with a sponge. Now, I seem to have run out of makeup sponges, so I have to use this art sponge, and it wasn't the best. Um, I will have to get more makeup sponges now so I can like make these videos and use the stencils a bit better. But this sponge was what I had, and it didn't um, work too badly. I just do prefer a makeup sponge when I'm using a stencil. So I did have to wet the sponge a little bit so it would work, otherwise it just stays really dry. Um, so that created quite a nice image. You can see it wasn't perfect, but that's okay. And I'm making sure to clean my stencil because I don't want it to get ruined and I want the image to be able to come out nice and crisp when I use it in the future. And now for the feathers. And you'll see that um, there was too much paint and too much water. So the feathers do come out a little bit sp splodgy, but that's okay, I'll fix that. And I wanted the feathers to look like they're all like pointing slightly different directions, they're all not the same. So I will flip the stencil over so it's pointing in a different direction to do the last two. And there'll be three feathers. And they're all pointing slightly differently as if maybe like there's some breeze blowing past or something like that. And you can see that last stenciled image was the best. So now I'm going in with the black paint again with this liner brush. Um, those of you who are familiar to my channel know that I'm crazy about this liner brush because it works so beautifully. And that will be like the threads hanging from the Dreamcatcher and I'll also fill in some of the images in the Dreamcatcher as well. And I'm just adding some beads from the thread, again using that brush, it's a nice thin brush. And you can see it's not perfect, you can tell it's, it's all very sketchy, I thought I would try to make it look as if that part was stenciled as well, so I wanted everything to look a bit sketchy and imperfect. And so you can see now, I'm just adjusting the um, Dreamcatcher image to how I want it. There was a few spots where it didn't like um, stencil properly, and that's okay, I just wanted to fill it in and make it a bit stronger so it would stand out from the background even more. And you can see still it doesn't stand out that much, but once we add highlights that'll pop out nicely. So they're just adding some more details. So I'll just add some more beads in the dream catcher. Very quickly, very sketchily. Just filling it in a little bit more. And now I'm just wetting the brush slightly and I'm just going to add a little border just to kind of bring everything together. Which looks really nice, I think. So, while I was letting that dry, I wanted to add a quote. So the quote I picked was, never let go of your dreams. But all those words weren't on this stencil that Sean has as well. So I've just masked off different areas, as you can see, and I'm just stenciling through step by step. And you can see the letters aren't coming out perfectly, but that's okay, we'll fix that. And we'll be able to make it um, a lot more legible after everything's dried. So um, there's quite a few words on this stencil, like, Courage, hope, kindness, grateful, gratitude, creative, embrace, all sorts. So I'm just using it to, um, I'm just stretching the stencil, the use of the stencil basically. And so every time I've like done a word, I clean that area of the stencil so it doesn't dry too much, but I don't clean it every time. I just clean it after every word I've done. And you can see some places I probably should have masked off because I did stencil through some areas I shouldn't have, but that's all right. And I just used washi tape to mask it off. That was the closest thing I had to me. I just used a washi tape I'm not a fan of um, to do that. And as well, I did like trace through the stencil beforehand onto the paper, as you can see, so that I can place everything. I know where, where it goes and how it works. And then I can just remove um, the stencil, the, the traced papers so that I can stencil through. So now I'm putting on the last word and you can see that some areas went really well and some were really splodgy where there was obviously too much water. 
but that's okay. That just kind of goes with the whole feel of it. I really did like how it turned out in the end. And now I'm going to make sure that stencil's nice and clean a little bit after I finish the last word. Right. So while the quote is drying, oh, wait, oh, sorry. I'm just filling in some of the um, letters where it didn't stencil too um, well. So like the U and the T and stuff. And while that's drying, I'm going to add some highlights using my Uniball Signo pen. This is really good. Um, it adds some really nice highlights and it just br brings out everything. So especially with the feathers where I lost most of the detail when I was stenciling through them, I was able to bring that back with the pen and add some extra detail where I wanted to. So I put it on the beads, on the threads from the Dreamcatcher and, and on the Dreamcatcher as well where say the sun might hit it. And that you can see is just making it pop straight off the canvas, which I love about adding highlights. It's always um, important to ground your pieces with like a dark color, but then you can make it pop with a lighter color. So yes, so now I'm just I'm just keep on adding more highlights here and there. Again, the highlights are very sketchy. Just kind of adding it wherever I feel that I need to. And even after I turned off the camera, I was still adding highlights. I just could, couldn't really leave it alone for a while. And I will do the same to my quote in a little bit. And you do want to make sure that your canvas is nice and dry before you use your pen because you don't want to ruin the nib. Oh, and I added my signature there with a Sharpie pen, but I will go in and redo it with um, some calligraphy ink. And you'll see that later on. So now I'm just going around the letters and where say the sun might hit it, I've gone stronger, but then where it wouldn't, I've just kind of lightly gone over. So you can still see like the edge around the letters, but it's not, everything isn't strongly white. And you can see again, it's just popped straight off, just like the dream catcher. And you can really see everything and it doesn't matter how splodgy the stenciling was, you can still read it really nicely especially the N and the E just kind of became one at some point. So I was happy that I was able to bring that all back. So you can see a very sketchy highlights, not perfect at all. It kind of matches as well because the canvas was a bit textured after a while. So I wouldn't have been able to get like a perfect line. So yeah, I went in with the um, calligraphy pen, but didn't like it. I did redo my signature, so it's stronger now. And I just wanted the background just looked really plain and it didn't look finished yet. So again, going in with one of those masks, adding some very splodgy stenciling. You can see, you can barely see any detail, but that's all good. I will add some ghost prints as well, especially around the edge. And I did go with my sponge. I didn't realize the camera was recording, so apologies for that. Just very messily. You can kind of see there with the sponge when it was a bit wet with the black, just to um, make the edges just look a bit more finished. So again, I um, stenciled on those edges and now I'm going in with white and I didn't feel like washing my sponge. So I just scrambled up a piece of paper towel and used the white paint and that worked really well. And then it also added an extra texture. So I was really happy with that. And that just brightened everything up and I'll do the same on the edge. So that's it. Um, I hope you liked the video. If you did, please do subscribe to my channel, check out Sean's channel as well, subscribe to her channel and look out for more videos. So thanks again for watching and please join me again for another arty adventure. Bye.